I'll be scared to death when I see a report like that on television. What we need to look at is what's called the closed organic cycle. It's also referred to in older health books as the wheel of life. It shows you here that humus and microorganisms are the foundation of life. Okay? The soil is the base from which the plants get their nutrition and all these other things I'm about to show you. Animals live off of plants. The animals can only be as healthy as the plants, and man eats animals and plants. So you have a closed cycle. Everything in nature dies and goes back into the soil. If a lion dies, it lays down on the ground, and the only thing that eats it is a buzzard or the decomposer, so the microorganisms in the soil. The top of the carnivorous pile just basically goes back into the soil and feeds the little guys. So there's a very, very uh, tight, carefully regulated, fully supported cycle. Uh, Walter Russell refers to it as the love principle. In nature, the microorganism gives its life in service of the grass. The grass gives its life in service of the zebra. The zebra gives its life in service to the lion, and the lion gives its life in service to the microorganism, so the life cycle completes itself. And what Walter Russell refers to as the love principle is that each lives a life of fullness, but it usually ends in the mouth of another creature, and that is a complete life cycle, and that is how nature is designed. So I like Einstein. He's one of my heroes. I've studied him extensively. So I've used pictures of him in here, and the first chapter of my book is called If Einstein Were Your Doctor, and it's all about how he would handle typical health solutions using his you know, general theory of everything is connected to everything, and that's something I think is important. So Einstein's saying here, the soils are the foundation, literally the ground substance of all that lives. Do you think we can really know and appreciate or practice effective nutrition without knowledge of how to manage the soil and how the soil functions. I would like you to ask yourself that question right now. Can we really practice nutrition without understanding the soil? Okay, keep that in mind through the lecture. And it might interest you to know that I've never found a university in the world that teaches anything to do with soil science whatsoever, no matter what level of degree you get. So let's take a look and you can see for yourself now, it might interest you to know, if you've ever read the Bible, you've all heard of Adam and Eve, I take it. Does anybody know what the word Adam means in Greek or Arabic? <coughs> well, I'll help you. Adam, in Greek, means creature of the earth, of earthly slime. In Arabic, creature of red earth. Adam, a man of the soil. Humus, the word humus is the derivative from which the word human came. Humus is organic matter that's been processed by soil microorganisms, and the word human is a derivative of humus. Adam means of earthly slime or of red earth, and humus is human. Okay? So as far back as you can go, even in sacred texts, you will find many reliable references to the fact that man's physical being, physical body, emanates out of the soil. We literally are the biological and physical extension of all our genetic and biological predecessors. Our great-grandparents are viruses, fungi, and bacteria. If you follow the genetic chain backwards, historically, you get to those three creatures and they are not only there to help us, but they are Mother Nature's garbage collectors. So whenever we're making mistakes, as I'll show you, they're there to rectify the mistakes for Mother Nature. I'll show you what Eve means later. I haven't forgot. But I have a special diagram so you can get to know Eve. Okay? She's hot. <laughs> Do you know what Adam said to Eve the first time they were about to have sex? He says, stand back. I don't know how big it gets. <laughs> kind of scary. Okay. I'm glad I found out before I met my first girl. OK. 
Okay, the topsoil is the Earth's digestive system. Okay? I'm going to show you now how the Earth's digestive system processes and metabolizes nutrition in the soil. And what I'm going to show you is that whatever you do to the Earth's digestive system, you automatically do to yours. There's no way around it. Okay? So I'm going to take you through two phases of Earth digestion. The first phase is called superficial. The second phase is called deep digestion. And I'll also show you what our modern farming technologies are doing to the Earth's digestive processes. First, it's important for you to know that in all serious farming operations, organic and biodynamic, the production of humus or compost is absolutely an essential, a pivotal point upon which the entire farm operates. So in any real farm, you will see composting being done constantly because that is what controls the nutrition in the soil and that is what is essential to feed the plants and keep the nutrient values up and feed the microorganisms. And this is mixed in with fertilizer and I'll show you how it all works in a minute. It's also very important for you to realize just what's in healthy soil. One gram, which is about the weight of an American penny. So one gram of soil or a half a sewing thimble, you know the little thimble you can put over your finger in sewing? Half a thimble is about a gram of soil, has some 600 million microorganisms of tens of thousands of different species of bacteria, of fungi. So there's about 600 million microorganisms and some 10,000 species of bacteria and fungi. Our ancestors are prevalent in healthy soil and they're down there doing a tremendous amount of work for us as I will show you. Here's a quote from a famous British farmer who is on record for having numerous uh, awards in farming, uh, breeding racehorses and was cited by the, U the, the UK government for producing the most nutritious milk of all the farmers in the UK and was investigated by the government when the quality of the milk in the UK started dropping down so low it became a national uh, risk. And they found that out when they had almost 50% of the soldiers reporting for duty in the Second World War had to be turned away due to malnutrition. So when they found this guy's milk at such a high quality, they investigated and found out that he was using organic farming principles. He's written several books on farming. One of the comments he makes in here is absolutely essential to keep in mind. Soil organisms are the unpaid labor force of the farm working constantly to break down not only the organic matter present in the soil, but also its complex minerals, so making them available to plants. So what he's showing you here is that the microorganisms in the soil are the absolute essential workforce and they take what you would know of as soil minerals or rock and they convert them in their bodies, liquefy them and make them bioavailable to plants. Most people actually think plants eat dirt. Plants don't eat dirt any more than you do and plants don't eat poop any more than you do. Okay? The, the soil microorganisms are the ones that like to poop and the soil microorganisms are the ones that perform all the alchemical functions to convert nutrition out of rock and soil into food that can be fed to plants. Here's a who eats who board of microorganisms. So there's symbiotic microorganisms in here. These are special mycorrhiza fungi which I'll show you and then there's a whole host of different organisms that eat each other. What's going on in the soil, if, if, you could, if you could just shrink yourself down, I guarantee you, if you could shrink yourself down and they had TV, it would be just like watching, you know, uh, Terminator or something. It would be just like that. There'd be people getting killed, stuff getting blown up, bugs on vacation, bugs having sex. It would be wild as hell down there, okay? And that's the who screws who, who eats who board, okay? <laughs> And that's important because a lot of people, for example, won't eat meat because they think, oh, you know, I, I want to be spiritual and I don't want to harm animals. But what they don't realize is that the plants are being fed by the microorganisms that support that particular type of plant. And one of the first things that happens is the friendly symbiotic microorganisms for any plant eat the enemy and feed it to the plant. It's been shown by hard, cold research that plants are carnivorous as hell. Okay, you might want to know that. So if you're a vegetarian, you're just eating little animals. They're just being fed to you in a liquid form. 